I haven't had Popeyes in so damn long. Right. You know how much sodium is in there? I missed this. You should Salt Lake City dry as hell. I'm eating all the salt in the world. Life is beautiful. Alright. Are you guys ready for your headliner this evening? Yo, Jay has toured with Dry Bar. He's back home at the 801. I want you guys to give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Jay Whitaker! Hired an all black film crew in Utah. Holy shit! Inglewood Films is in the motherfucking building. All of us from Inglewood, and somehow our black asses made it out to Utah. Thank you so much for being here. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is really awesome. This is cool. It's good to be back in Utah, which is a sentence I never thought I would say. It's because this is fun. I brought lotion for everybody. This is like a weird thing because I know there's a lot of white people in here that do not moisturize. Why is that? You live a mile above sea level. Not one, you use all those dumbass essential oils for your headaches, but won't use it on an elbow. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. A lot of people wonder where I've been the last few years. I moved to Boston. It's cool there. It's friendly, kind of. But like, but I miss being in Utah. I forgot how friendly y'all are here. Y'all are friendly, but judgmental, but curious, but friendly, but judgmental, but friend. It's just jump rope with friendliness right here. But it's good to be back. It's good to be back. I was watching, I remember when everything happened with George Floyd and this, the tragedy. I saw the protests and I saw, I, was, I wanted to come home because I missed everybody. I just want, I was in a new place. I didn't, I didn't feel you know, safe. I wanted to come home and be around my family and friends I love. And then I saw a white woman taking a shit on top of a cop car. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna wait a couple years. I mean, it don't look safe. <laughs> and I hope you are taking care of yourselves during these unprecedented times. I think that's very important. You know, we've had a we've had a rough couple of years. I hope you you're taking care of yourself during these unprecedented times. You know what I mean by unprecedented times? You get an email from some company that wants to suck up to you because they want your business. You know what I mean? It's like we here at Panera Bread during these unprecedented times really appreciate your business. Fuck that email. <laughs> Give me my buy one, get one off my panini. That's what I want. But also, unprecedented times is a solid excuse for whatever you got going on in your life. You missed that mortgage payment? Hey, I'm dealing with some unprecedented times right now. <laughs> you took a shit on top of a cop car? Hey, I'm <laughs> dealing with some unprecedented times. Fellas, you can't get it up in the bed? Hey, you're dealing with some unprecedented times. You wanna go get a panini? That's what you're supposed to ask for. You know? Yeah, but now I live, I live in Massachusetts. It's an interesting place, you know? I live in a town 40 minutes south of Boston. 40 minutes south of Boston. It's called Plymouth, Massachusetts. You may have heard of it. Yes, okay. We've read about it in social studies, history class, home of Plymouth Rock. Clap if you ever seen Plymouth Rock. That's exactly the response it deserves. 
You have to understand, like, I lived here for 15 years. I, you know, I went to Zion, I saw the beautiful, was it the delicate arc you see where it looks like it's all, Jesus made it and then it goes up to heaven and makes a U-turn to come back down to keep us grounded. <laughs> so I like rocks. <laughs> so I woke up in Plymouth, Massachusetts. I was like, that's the first thing I wanted to see. I wanted to see Plymouth Rock. I was so excited to see it. And then I saw the shit. It is nothing more than an unfinished barbecue pit. That's all it is. <laughs> I'll save you the trip. It looks like a quarantine project that somebody was like, nah, fuck it, that's, that's all I want to do. <laughs> Plymouth Rock is not a real attraction. The real attraction is the park bench that's 30 feet away. Because you get to sit there and watch people come from all over the world <laughs> and be disappointed in real time. You can catch me there next Sunday. I remember I saw this stupid family from Texas. They had their Dallas Cowboys hats on and shit. They had four ugly kids. Fuck those kids, they're not here. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Stupid kids. All of a sudden, he looks down, he's like, well, this is it? We planned a whole goddamn trip around this. Could've went to Fenway and saw the Sox. Guys, I don't know what was going on in their marriage, but she asked for a divorce at Plymouth Rock. It was the most American shit I ever seen in my life. <laughs> Took a knee and saluted, Kaepernick. It was great. I was very confused. America, we're very divided as a country. We're very divided right now. It's pretty crazy. Everybody's fighting in the Facebook comments. I'll cut you, bitch. You know? <laughs> Oh, Jesus, I just wanted to send you a gif. I don't know if it's gif, gif, I don't give a shit, all right? But we're very divided as a country. I don't know what America needs, but I do have an idea. I think what America needs to help us heal is just a good Sean Paul concert. Some of y'all ain't on board, don't y'all better give Sean the dutty dutty respect he deserves. Sean Paul's music is amazing. I remember I went to a show, I saw a live show, it was one of the best shows I ever seen. Because it didn't matter your race, your gender, your sexual preference, your creed, none of that shit mattered. All those people came under one roof to see this quadracial Chinese, Jamaican, Jewish, Portuguese man say into a microphone, ba bang 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 ba bang ba bang bang <laughs> Something about that unites us as a country. They should slide it in at the end of the national anthem for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Uh oh, ba bang 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 ba bang, hey. <laughs> then have Pitbull come out for no reason. <laughs> Dolly. <laughs> Everything we're very divided as a country. I don't have I don't have solutions, but I do have ideas. Gun control. I don't know how we fix it. I don't know how we fix it. Look, if you own a firearm in this country, you have the right to do that by the Second Amendment. However, if you don't own a firearm, get a crossbow. Zombies are coming. Shout out to Daryl. <laughs> Stay safe, whatever. <laughs> but I do believe that if you own a firearm, we just, just make it a little bit, it shouldn't be that easy to get them. Just saying, if you own a firearm, you should have at least five years of formal ballroom dance training. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you own an AR-15, you should have at least three years of tap and two years of jazz. <laughs> You're like, Jay, where are you going with this? Don't worry, I'm making my point. Because hear me out, I'll never forget, I was on the road. I was watching, I was watching movies. I got bored one night, saw this cool movie called Footloose and Kevin Bacon. This white dude had a hard day in school. He was getting bullied. People were beating the shit out of this kid. But he didn't bring a gun to school or nothing. He drove to a warehouse and settled his shit out.
I'm just saying nobody got killed in Footloose. I'm saying we don't gotta shoot each other. Just besides dance battles be way more cooler. I'm just saying you got served sounds a lot better than you got shot. Cause brother, if I point this, if I point a gun at you, you're gonna feel threatened. But if I point my toe at you, you're like, damn, look at his technique. I'm sorry, that was sensual. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things have been going on for good for me. 2020 was a hard year for a lot of people, but I managed to find some happiness. I got married in 2020. Thank you. Had a quarantine wedding. Anybody have a quarantine wedding? Clap if you had a quarantine wedding. Yeah, you see why they're saying woo? Yeah, because they saved so much money. We had 400 people that were supposed to come to this wedding. A lot of y'all were in the audience. It was so cathartic to hit reply all and say, no thank you, send money. Unprecedented times. And they did, we went to Wendy's just cause we could. Four for four, it's on me baby, get the, get the spicy nuggets. Quarantine weddings is the shit man. We get another pandy, man. Just get married during quarantine. It'll save a lot of money. That was cool. We had a, and so you got to realize this is, this is July 2020 when we got married. And so, we're, you know, Boston is shut down. Everything's shut down pretty much. You know, some, there's no entertainment, so everybody's out at the beach. You know, so we got married at Duxbury Public Beach. It's a public beach. It's nice, you know, but it's a public beach. So people out there doing public beach shit. So we had to find a nice spot where people weren't doing ketamine. <laughs> and we decided to get murdered. <laughs> but it was crazy because I forgot the rings in the car. And keep in mind, it's a public beach. People are watching this shit go down. They've got no entertainment. Tom Brady left them on St. Patrick's Day. I'm all they got now. Forgot the ring, so now, and for the record, my wife looked amazing that day, she looked beautiful. I had the white linen suit on that day with the karate pants, you know. I looked like Black Goku, it was awesome. I looked like the fifth member of Boys to Men that day. Had the little chancletas and shit, and it was, I looked amazing. Left the rings in the car, so now people are watching this unfold. They see me sprinting away from my bride-to-be. And what did they do? They booed us at our own wedding! <laughs> but we didn't even plan this shit through. We didn't know. We thought we was going to die. <laughs> we thought we was going to die, y'all. And it, you know, we figured it out. We didn't even plan a good song. We didn't even plan a good song. We got married to Marvin Gaye's Ain't No Mountain High Enough. <laughs> That's a great song. Would not get married to it. Ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. What the hell is going on in that marriage? Why is your ass always in peril? I need to understand it. Is this like, when did we become Mario and you became Princess Peach? I don't need to, like, is Bowser involved? Like, what is going on? The highest mountain is Mount Everest. The lowest valley is the Dead Sea. The widest river is the Amazon River. Who's funding the trip at this point? <laughs> I just became your emergency contact. Every time I gotta rescue you, I gotta fuck up my sky miles. We're not off to a good start. <laughs> also, if you say those lyrics a little bit slower and an octave lower, it hits different. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. I 
That's not a love song anymore. That's a true crime documentary. Just saying, make sure you listen to the song all the way through. Love and life right now. Love and life. Got to take care of each other. I've been working on my mental health. That's, a, that's important. Go to, yeah. That's right. Where all my therapy? Where, where my therapy gang at? That's right. Clap it up. You got coverage, bitches. What? That's what I love about therapy. I walk in, I'm like, yeah, I got coverage, bitch. You know, and I... I it's, it's interesting because I, I started my therapy journey here in Utah, and I had a lot of white therapists named Kurt that didn't, <laughs> that didn't understand my black issues. You know, I'm paying for a 50-minute session. He's wanting to know what Jay-Z lyrics mean. Uh, he wants me to teach him how to tie a do-rag and teach him how to dug it. This ain't part of my copay. Like, I don't need this shit. And I got a black therapist, and I love it. We talk, but I, got, I got a black th therapist who's from Philadelphia. We don't do, we don't, we just sit there and talk black guy shit. Our shit is like real quick now. We just have these five minute sessions, and it's like, hey, hey, bro, you good? Yeah. You wanna talk about some shit? I mean, shit. <laughs> All right, then, I'll catch you next week. <laughs> That's it. I feel really good about it. It's really good. It's a real good feeling. Would you, would you pay for that, sir? If, it, if that's all it was, was just like, you know, just go, you go in and just get a nice little check in. You're like, hey, man, I mean, shit. <laughs> don't do that. Don't, 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 don't say shit. You, you don't have enough bass in your voice to do that, okay? <laughs> She's doing it all wrong. You sound like Kesha. It's weird. It's, <laughs> Miss, it's good to be back here, though. I, I really did miss Utah. You know, I was like, I love you, I love you <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> so I went on tour for a little bit back in, it started in 2018, and I stopped right at the, basically, uh, the beginning of 2020. So I was on tour for a long time. But I got a chance to see the United States. It was great. Went all over the Pacific Northwest, saw Portland and Seattle, it was cool. Went to Texas, survived Texas. <laughs> Went to Florida, survived Florida. <laughs> then I found myself in New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, anybody ever been in New Orleans? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I highly suggest y'all do it. It's amazing. So I go down there, and this is back when, this is back when I was living here in Utah. So now I'm down in New Orleans. We go down to Jackson Square, down in the French Quarter. We go to this wonderful restaurant called Muriel's. If you've ever been, go back. It's an amazing restaurant. Had a great meal, had crawfish etouffee, I had jambalaya, I had gumbo, I had turtle soup. Sidebar, turtle soup is delicious. <laughs> and I grew up on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> And I felt really guilty about the whole situation. But once I had a bite of Donatello, I started to think maybe Shredder was the good guy all along. And these teenage kids just kept messing with him. All he wanted to be was just a good guy who started up his own food processing company and Leonardo kept fucking it up. I digress. So I'm having this amazing food. The sous chef comes out to me, says, Jay, how'd you enjoy your meal? I said, that was amazing. I can't get this where, you know, I can't get this type of cuisine where I live. He said, well, where do you live? I was like, I live in Utah. He said, oh, what are you guys known for there? I was like, hey, man, can I just get a to-go box, please? <laughs> we were having fun, but I just, I didn't need to leave. He's like, no. He's like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great chef. I love, I love to learn about new cuisine. I was like, what do you guys have there? I'm like, oh man, we, we ain't got nothing fancy like, um, crawfish etouffee or nothing, but you know, sometimes, um, hey man, can I just get like, can I just get the check? <laughs> man, um, sometimes we just, all right, man, sometimes we take some mayonnaise.
and some ketchup. <laughs> and then what, what do you do? We do this with our finger to mix it up. <laughs> what do y'all call that? Uh, we, we call it fry sauce. <laughs> Guys, I said this to a shoe chef. He hits me with the upper echelon of Creole cuisine, which is crawfish etouffee, and I lowball him with the side chick of condiments, which is fry sauce. We gotta do better here, okay? Next time I come back here, y'all better have some real shit, okay? <laughs> Make some shit up, I don't know. You know? But I did represent, though. I was like, we do got this one thing where we take some potatoes <laughs> and some cornflakes. <laughs> Sprinkle on it like salt bay. Now you got funeral potatoes, my G. <laughs> my condolences. <laughs> Gotta be nicer to each other. That's the one thing I've learned by traveling the country is that people, everybody's mad at each other. Everybody wants to fight each other. Try to celebrate each other's accomplishments. Celebrate each other's wins. I mean, I came off the road, I ran into a good friend of mine. I hadn't seen him in eight months. You know, the pandemic and everything. I hadn't seen him in a while. Lost 80 pounds. Got his degree. Got married. I was like, dude, Sam, you're killing it. He's like, yeah. But I'm thinking about shaving the beard, though. And I was like, yo, why are we prestiging our face pubes, man? Like, it's just, it's just a beard. He's like, well, oh, should I shave the balls then? I'm like, dude, I haven't seen you in eight months. This got weird. <laughs> also, like, shave the balls is too aggressive. Fellas, can we stop saying that? I like to say some shit that's way cooler. I like to say fade the sack. <laughs> it's way cooler. I'm originally from Los Angeles. It sounds like a Snoop Dogg lyric when you say it. I'm about to fade the sack. It sounds like you're about to leave. Hey, I'm gonna fade the sack real quick. Being on the road was so fun though. Greenville, South Carolina. Okay, some of y'all have been. It's a wonderful place. It's got a nice little Austin, Texas vibe if you've never been. We do a great show. It was me and other, you know, a few other comedians. We had a great time on the show. After the show gets out, you know, we're getting ready to head out. We're only in town for one night of here. Jay! I turn around. It was three women that were at the show. She's like, is it cool if we come hang out with y'all? I'm like, sure, the more the merrier. We're only in town. We're going to go watch playoff basketball come through. So all of a sudden, we're drinking, partying, having a good time, you know, just watching playoff basketball, enjoying life. And the next thing you know, last call rolls around at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, all right, cool. Is, uh, is there something to eat around here? I'm not from here. I'm just trying to get some food before I go back to the airport. The woman looked at us with unwavering confidence and said, if you hungry, big man, you could have all three of us. I said, word. <laughs> Shit. This story is four years old, but I love telling it. I said, listen, first of all, I'm very flattered, I don't, but I, I, that's not gonna happen. One, this is actually two reasons. One, you know, I just met this woman. I think I'm gonna marry this woman. I, I feel, I, I love this woman. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Second, and this is the most important thing, you telling me this shit at one o'clock in the morning? <laughs> that's 9.30 information. Fellas, let's be real with ourselves. Let's be real with our bodies. Because if that shit was to actually go down, only a woman and a quarter would be satisfied at best. Because after that, I'm gonna have to go reflect, you know, journal about it, talk to my therapist. He says, shit. 
drink some pomegranate juice, play a little 2K, and then I come back and knock the rest of that ass out. So no thank you. She's like, are you serious? Are you serious? That's every man's fantasy. I'm like, no, that's just not. That's a to-do list. You are asking for an Xbox Call of Duty achievement. Triple kill, that shit, I am not trying to prestige tonight. I have friends that are DJs. I've seen them mix three records at the same time. You want me to do that with my dick? <laughs> no. So I went back to my hotel room, called my now wife, and told her the exact same story I just told y'all. She says, who thinks you lay a pipe after 9.30? I know you. And that's how I knew she was the one. I'm like, all right, all right, fine, fine, fine. What originally brought me here to Utah like I said, I'm originally from Los Angeles, Orange County, Riverside, San Diego. I lived all over Southern California. But then I found myself here in Utah, unexpectedly. I, I, ran, I used to run track, and then I got hurt, and then I decided to join the greatest United States Air Force. Yes. <laughs> Are there any other veterans in the house? If any branches, any veterans, make some noise. Where you at? Right on. Right on, what, uh, Marines, you in here? Marines in here? Jesus. <laughs> Army in here? I'll speak slower, all right. Uh, <laughs> Marine, do they like the uniform on you? Jesus Christ. Can someone make him a cocktail with Xanax in it, please? God. Nobody make any sudden movements. I don't think he's actually said a real word yet. My wife likes the uniform on me. You know? I remember one night, she wanted me to dress up like I was a drill sergeant. And she'd be the cadet. So I'm saying a bunch of dumb shit. I'm like, yeah, ma'am, you got me standing at attention. I'm ready to deploy these troops into your bunker. And things were going great till I had a dishonorable discharge. She told me to drop down and give her 20, I could only give her five, you know? God damn. <laughs> Parents in the house make some noise. I like y'all. We recording this on a Sunday night. Y'all left y'all kids at home. Y'all really don't give a fuck. Hell yeah. Got a 15-year-old son, straight-A student, honor roll. I'm very proud of him. Very proud of him. He's, very, he's almost as tall as me now. It's crazy. You know, and uh, you know, he wanted to try out for the basketball team because, you know, he's great. He excels at academics, but now he needs to work on his athletic prowess. So he says, Dad, I mean, you know, I want to try out for the basketball team. He's like, all right, cool. He says, can I get the new LeBrons? I said, absolutely not. I've seen your jump shot. The shit's trash. <laughs> you have to understand, my son was not working on his game at all. No, an off season. He mostly spent it watching anime and playing Street Fighter. Nothing wrong with that. I love that shit. Yes, that, you finally clap. I like that shit. You've been chill the whole show, and then all of a sudden you hear anime Street Fighter. This guy, this guy gets me. That's what I'm here for. No, he wasn't work. He wasn't working on his game. 
anime and Street Fighter all the time. So it clearly affected his game because at the tryout, you know, he's doing this during a full on scrimmage. He's. <laughs> First one down the court, boy, fast. <laughs> Sitting there monologuing at the free throw line, charging up like. Argh! Nobody passed him the ball whatsoever. <laughs> so I asked him, I was like, son, why didn't, you, why didn't you work on your game? He gave me the best Gen Z answer he could think of. He says, dad, I'm just focusing my life in other areas right now. <laughs> I didn't even know what the fuck to do with that. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna use that in these unprecedented times. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> but he's like, come on, Dak, for real, can I get the LeBrons? I said, no, 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 no. I, you know, I appreciate it, but I think we should get you a shoe that reflects your skill level of the game. <laughs> so I got him two pairs of Skechers. Got him a nice little clipboard, dry erase, dry erase marker, and now he's gonna be the assistant coach. They undefeated right now. He's a good kid. Very proud of him. How you doing, sir? I'm great. Great? What's your name, friend? Mitch. Mitch, solid. Is this, is this, who's this with you, if you don't mind me asking? This is Andrea, my fiance. She can speak for herself, sir. <laughs> What's your name? Okay, and Andrew, who are you to Mitch, if you don't mind me asking? I'm his fiance. Ooh, all right. Shout out to Mitch. Put a ring on it and a thing on it. All right, all right, good for you. Respectfully. That's the shit that my son says all the time now. He says, you, you, I realize you can get away with so much shit if you put respectfully at the end. It's amazing. So y'all doing the thing? Respectfully. <laughs> you want to borrow my uniform? <laughs> During the pandemic, obviously the pandemic was, was crazy for all of us. We had to find into our hobbies. Mitch, do you have any hobbies? Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, what are your hobbies? Uh, I like photography. You like photography? You're, you're so fucking pleasant right now. <laughs> I was not ready for how pleasant. <laughs> You have hobbies? Sure. <laughs> Photography. All right. Um, and Andrea? Uh -huh. Yeah, what are, what are your hobbies? Uh, I have two kids, so that's my hobby. Okay. All right. All right. That's, that's a, parenting is a hobby? <laughs> yeah, you know, I just kind of took up these kids, you know. It's, you know, I try to work on it when I can, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I have enough time. Uh, but I had like, we, we were stuck in the house. We were stuck in the house. We had to deal, we had to find our ways to keep ourselves busy. You know, a long time ago, I used to be a musician. I used to rap, you know, I did a little hip hop. You know, so I, started, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna start making music again. But I'm in my late thirties. What the fuck am I gonna rap about? I take Metamucil in the morning. I lost all my street cred. So I wrote about, I wrote a song about what I like and I love and what we all love. Brunch. All right, here we go. Wake up like it's the first of the month, about to go get some drinks, Bloody Mary's and brunch. I got the eggs benedict with the sourdough toast. It's hard to be the least, cause I'm doing it the most. Ricotta pancakes, bacon with the hot sauce. Later on, we gonna play at some top golf. She like the way I swing, I'm nice with the wood. About to go to our cabin, spend a night in the woods. 12 p.m. on our way to get brunch. 1 p.m. we on our way to get drunk. 2 p.m. now I'm eating with her. 3 p.m. now I'm leaving with her. 4 p.m. we got some Brussels sprouts. 5 p.m. now we at our house. 6 p.m. I be digging around. 6.48 still digging it out. 7 p.m. we Netflix and binge. 8 p.m. we watch season two and we do it again. I do have some more good news and I hate to brag. But me and my wife, we bought our first house. Very proud of that, very proud of that. I've lived in apartments and slept on couches and air mattresses all my life. 
And so now we finally got ourselves a house and I love it. If it was up to me, I would buy 37 homes a year because you have to understand how my marriage works. My wife, she's very logistical. She's very structured. I've seen her masturbate to a spreadsheet, okay? <laughs> I'm over sharing. <laughs> Nah, but you have to understand that's the perfect, you know, me, I, 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 I'm disorganized all the time. I wake up and choose violence. I thrive on chaos. That's how I work. <laughs> chaos and order. So we're the perfect storm for an open house. So we're hitting open houses together. We can handle it. You know, it's amazing. But I also found out that in the process, my wife gets really turned on each time we went through the home <laughs> buying process. <laughs> I remember I came home, I said, baby, I got great news. We got pre-approved. She's like, drop your pants, stick, man. <laughs> Shit, the next day I went out and applied for like 37 different things. <laughs> it was amazing. And then, true story, when we closed on our house, we closed on our house. I, you know, I texted her at work. I said, babe, we closed. We, this is about to be our forever home. She texts me back. This is a real text that my wife sent me. She says, and I quote, you want some of this homeowner pussy? <laughs> <laughs> so I started texting her back. I was like, oh shit, I, uh, I mean, I, I can't, can't wait to see the Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> I'm gonna give you that backsplash you always wanted. <laughs> and then we just started talking about plumbing. It got weird. <laughs> so now I get to shop where everybody shops for their home. Know, improvement and all that stuff. Not Lowe's, not Home Depot, TJ Maxx. <laughs> Some of y'all are not on board. Uh, y'all need to get on board. Don't, there will be no TJ Maxx slander during this set, okay? Because TJ Maxx was there for you during the rough times. <laughs> Ladies, when you needed a last minute shaving kit for a father-in-law you don't even fucking like, <laughs> TJ was there for you. Fellas, when you needed a last minute V-neck or a button up to go to some stupid gender reveal baby for some <laughs> shitty kid, Max was there for you. So like I said, there'll be no TJ Maxx slander during this set. So I'm in the back and you know, I'm buying all the house shit. I'm buying a bunch of shit for the house and everything. You know, I even bought myself a little V-neck in case I wanted to go out and do shit later. Might turn up on a Friday night, go get some ice cream, but make sure I get some lactate. <laughs> That's how I party hard now, it's just like, you know, I forget to take my lactate. That's it. <laughs> I'll risk it all for a Klondike bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I buy all my shit, I go back to the home, I buy a bunch of little shitty, you know, shitty basic furniture. We start, we start from scratch, you know, and everything. We didn't have a housewarming thing, you know, housewarming party. We didn't have a wedding, really. We had a quarantine wedding, so we couldn't really fund everything. Or we, had to, we couldn't fund it from the family. We had to do it all our, ourselves. So now I got all this stuff. I try on the V-neck. It's a little bit too large for me. So I'm like, baby, I'll be right back. I'm going to take this shirt back. I'm going to get a smaller size, and I'm going to take you out, get the lactate ready. It's going down tonight. <laughs> so I go back to TJ Maxx two hours later, and all of a sudden, you know, I realized, you know, I'm like, excuse me, miss, um, I just wanted to return this. I bought this V-neck, you know, and I just wanted to get a smaller size. And she's like, okay, where's your receipt? I was like, oh, God damn, I'm sorry, I left it on the credenza, which is a fun sentence for me to say now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> And so she's like, well, okay, well, you know, well, how do I know you didn't steal it? I was like, excuse me, I don't like, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a V-neck, miss. I'm doing just fine, all right? <laughs> okay. I, I, and frankly, I don't like your attitude. You know what, I'm gonna invoke those words. Can I speak to your manager? She said, bet, I'm going on break. Good luck, bitch. I was like, 
I don't know what happened. She goes on the intercom and said, manager to the front desk. And I'm like, oh shit, what is about to go down? And then she, she came out. And I kid you not, swear to God, the manager's name was Karen. <laughs> This ain't even a shopping experience, okay? This is now a Marvel Phase 5 Thanos reveal, okay? She even had little topaz and amethyst and turquoise jewelry, like she'd been collecting minority infinity stones her whole life. So I said, hey, Karen, uh, how was your 2020? Uh, so then I said, uh, she said, what seems to be the problem? And I'm like, oh, you know, I just wanted to get this exchange, this V-neck. I bought it a little bit too large. I wanted to get a smaller size. And she's like, do you have the receipt? I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't care. She's like, well, do you have the car that you bought it on? I said, yeah. She's like, all right, cool. <laughs> Guys, that's honestly really the end of the story. <laughs> I met a super nice Karen. She gave me 50% off coupons. She signed me up for a TJ Maxx rewards card. I had a pleasant shopping experience. Guys, I walked in there a man, I walked out a Maxinista. I'm living my best life. Living my best life. And that's the message I want to bring to y'all, is just live your best life, you know? Sometimes you end up places that you didn't think you were, you were supposed to be in. You know, I never expected that shit. I never expected it. And then I moved to, to Boston, and now it's crazy because they show me love out there. I'm doing, I'm doing okay out there. They bring me up. Give it up all the way from Salt Lake City. Give it up for Jay Whitaker. <laughs> and then a six foot one black dude shows up and now it's not a comedy show. It's now a magic show. Cause they're how the fuck, I, we didn't even know there was black people in Utah. <laughs> But you gotta understand, we can't all be, you know, from cool places. <laughs> Not all black people are from, like, Detroit, <laughs> Brooklyn, Atlanta, where the players play and they ride on them things, like, every day. Sometimes you just gotta be a systems administrator in Taylorsville, Utah. <laughs> My point is, we everywhere. Somebody got to pass Giannis the ball in Milwaukee, okay? We everywhere, we out here. But make the best of where you at, you know, because people will always try to take your joy away. I promise you that. I promise you that. They will always try to take your joy away. I'm a, I'm a jovial dude. Let me tell you about my first day in Massachusetts. It's a real story. It's a real story. We moved in September of 2019. I quietly left Utah. We only told maybe a few people. And then I got drunk and told a shitload of people. <laughs> but we quietly left. We just packed our bags, got in the car, whatever it could take, and just drove east. So we finally, you know, we finally get in. And then um, we wake up in Plymouth, Massachusetts. We're at my now mother-in-law's house. Her name is Shishi. I love Shishi. She's amazing. Shishi's like, you know, let's take our, let's, you guys should go out for a walk. I was like, all right, cool. So now we go for a walk in Plymouth, Massachusetts. I have a black Chewini dog. His name is Wilson. He's just like me. Black and adorable. It's great. It's a great dog, it's a great companion, my best friend. So first of all, if, if you don't know what a Chewini is, it's a Chihuahua dachshund situation. I didn't come up with the name Chewini, some white lady on Pinterest did. I don't make the rules. We're walking down Court Street. We're on our way to see the shitty rock. I'll never forget this, true story, you know? See a white Ford Thunderbird pull up, two white guys in the car. Dude in the passenger side window rolls down his window and says, you're as black as your dog, and then proceeds to call me the N-word. My wife did miss a beat. Could you wait a week? We just moved here. Wait till we get acclimated. <laughs> she turns to me and says, baby, you all right? I said, absolutely. I appreciate you. Are you okay? She said, absolutely. 
She's like, you sure you're okay? I'm like, baby, if anything, I feel sorry for that dude. She's like, really, why? I feel sorry for him, because you have to understand, he was hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride while he was trying to holler at me. Deep down inside, he's a creep, a scrub, and so damn unpretty, because I'm crazy, sexy, cool. And maybe, just maybe, he needs a little bit more TLC. But next time I see him, I'm gonna punch him in his left eye. Salt Lake City, thank you so much. My name is Joe. We did it. We did it. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. It was like on a Sunday? On a Sunday? They came through for me on a Sunday? Bro! Get this mic off of me. God! This is. Oh my God. This is the happiest I've been in a long time. Oh my God. Let's... We did it. Bro! 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 Oh, thank you. I'm so fucking proud of you. Ooh, that was oh so much God, fun. Dude. I forgot so much oh stuff in a moment. Oh my God. Ah, that was so much fun. Oh my God. Oh my God, we emptied the tank. I haven't done that in forever. Never. This was so cool. This was so fucking cool. Oh my God. It's like, it's like, it's like get this meet and greet out the way. Slack on my mackin', or sippin' on my pimpin'. My day is not a date unless I'm making that chicken.